Hi guys, so if you're looking to take your driving test in your own car, then this video is essential for you to watch before you take that test. Firstly, make sure the car that you're going to be taking for your test is suitable for the test. There are some cars they don't allow. I'm just going to read from the list here. They're basically convertible cars. So, for example, they wouldn't accept a Mini Convertible, a KA Convertible, a Toyota IQ, or a Beetle Convertible due to poor rear view visibility. So, if you've got a convertible, or also perhaps if you're taking a van to the driving test, which is fairly unlikely, but if you are, if you have a convertible or a panelled van, make sure you call the DVSA before booking that test to make sure your vehicle is going to be acceptable. You don't want to get to the test and then be rejected for that test because you've turned up in an inappropriate, unacceptable vehicle and you'll then lose your test fee. Now, having made sure that your vehicle is suitable, you want to make sure that vehicle is actually roadworthy. So, just because it's got an MOT, it doesn't guarantee it's roadworthy. It could have been roadworthy when it got the MOT, but it may well have developed a fault since then. So, essentially, what you want to do is go through some vehicle checks, which you could call powder checks, which basically stands for petrol. Have you got enough petrol in your car for your driving test? Oil. Check under your bonnet. Make sure your oil level's good and there's no warning lights on the dashboard. Water. Again, check under your bonnet. Make sure any other water levels and any fluid levels, such as your engine coolant and your windscreen washer fluid, are topped up. If, for example, the examiner asks you to wash your windscreen and nothing comes out, that's not going to be good. D. Damage. Make sure there's no damage on your car. So, it doesn't matter if there's a slight dent, but make for basically there's nothing hanging off that's going to cause a danger. And basically make sure there's no cracks or damage to your lights, which may then stop them from working. But like I say, just the odd dent isn't going to be a major problem. E. Electrics. Make sure everything electrical on your car is working. So, for example, all your lights. Make sure as well that on your dashboard, there's no warning lights on your dashboard. If there's a warning light on your dashboard, you will not be taken out for your driving test and you'll lose your test fee. R. Rubber. Make sure that your tyres are in good condition. So there's no nails in the tyres. They've got at least 1.6 millimetres of tread. And they're also inflated correctly as per the manufacturer's guidelines. Even make sure your wiper blades are in good condition. So if it's raining, they're actually going to wipe off the water off your windscreen and not just leave lots of streaks and, and um, affect your visibility. You can find more about these vehicle checks on a video just up here in the top right corner. So, having made sure you've got a suitable vehicle and it's roadworthy, check for your insurance company to make sure that it is insured for a driving test. Typically, it should be, but there's no harm in giving your insurance company a call and just checking to be 100% sure. If your vehicle has features such as an electric handbrake, parking sensors, reversing cameras, those are all fine to use. Even the hill start assist is all fine to use, so there's no problem with any of that. Now, if you do have a reversing camera in your car, like I say, that's perfectly fine to use, but you must make sure you're still being observant and do not rely on the camera. So you must still be checking fully over your right blind spot, and in your mirrors, the road ahead, and over your left blind spot directly out of the rear window to make sure it's safe. Now, when using your own car for test, some people ask, does it matter it doesn't have dual controls? No, it doesn't matter. Your car does not need to have dual controls, but you must make sure you're a confident driver because, of course, if you make a mistake, the examiner hasn't got dual controls to save you and to keep your car safe and keep you safe, more importantly. The only time you will need dual controls fitted on the car is if you're taking a higher car to test. If it's a higher car, it is a legal requirement to have dual controls fitted. Now, this is fairly rare. But some vehicles might have a safety recall from the manufacturer. So there may have been, for example, fault with the steering when they designed the car. And then the manufacturers have asked to recall those vehicles to fix that fault. There is a list of these faults and the vehicles affected 
on the Gov.uk website. If it does have one of those faults, or is one of those vehicles affected, you must have had the issue fixed and have proof that it's fixed with you. If not, the examiner will not take you out. If you have any doubts over if your vehicle is suitable, you must call the DVSA well before your test date. Don't leave it just for a day or two before the test date because it might be too late to then do anything. The number to call them on is 0300 200 1122 or email them at customer services at dvsa.gov.uk. I will leave a link to all these things in the description below. Now you've made sure your vehicle is suitable for test, on the test day itself, you must have two things with you. You firstly must have an additional mirror for the examiner's use. Now I say you must have, if you don't have this with you, typically an examiner will have one in the office and they can go and get it to take, take with them. But of course it's not going to be a good start. If the examiner comes out to meet you, they say, do you have mirror? And say, oh, sorry, I forgot. I didn't think to check the government website. And they've got to go, okay, give me a second. I'll go back and get in, go in, get one. It's not going to be the best start. So really try to have one with you. The second thing is L plates. Make sure you've got L plates stuck to both front and rear of the car and make sure they're securely on. So some of these magnetic ones, they can just go flying off, as you might have experience with. If one goes flying off midway through your test, the examiner may then just stop the test and abandon the test and you won't have passed. So I'd suggest you get some very strong magnetic ones and then maybe even get some electrical tape to really make sure they're stuck on properly. So there's no chance of them flying off midway through your test. You can find a link in the description to some strong magnetic L plates as well as additional mirrors for the examiner. So you've now got a vehicle that's suitable for test and you've got all the bits you need. You take your driving test and you pass. Brilliant. Now, what's also important to do once you've passed is if you're going to be driving your vehicle back, you must inform your insurance company that you've passed before you drive back as your insurance company will have you down as a provisional license holder. But the moment you pass, you're a full license holder. So if you drive back without informing your insurance company you've passed, you'll be driving with invalid insurance. And if you're driving with invalid insurance and you get stopped by police, that's six penalty points in your license. And if you get six penalty points, within the first two years of passing your test, you will automatically lose your test. So in theory, what could happen is you pass your test, you forget to phone your insurance company, you drive home, you get stopped by the police, and they give you six penalty points and you've lost your license the same day you got it. So really not going to be good at all, is it? So really important, you phone your insurance company when you pass to make sure they update the rec their records. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please do let me know in the comments below how you got on your test in your own car. Hi guys, I thought I'd just show you this book to add to your collection. The New Driver's Handbook. It's a three in one book and it's got some pretty good reviews from a driving examiner and a driving instructor. It has over 800 practice theory test questions, common driving test faults, driving test general tips and advice on dealing with nerves on the big day. Finally it has tips for after you've passed your test including vehicle maintenance and driving abroad. You can find a link to this book in the description below. Now, back to the video.